Hello and welcome to God's View. So glad you joined us today. Remember to call the prayer lines at the bottom of the screen, 307-637-PRAY. We're seeing great miracles on those prayer lines and God is no respecter of persons and he wants a same answers and miracles for you. So call them, they're at the bottom of the screen. And for the new viewers, I wanna welcome you today to our program. Can we have a wide shot back there? Thank you. Um, I wanna welcome you today. Um, I'm Charlene back to Marion, one of your God's View hosts. This is uh, Jennifer Griffin, and we have Alana Garner, and Mary Ann's not with us again this week. My yeah. goodness. But she'll be back, and uh, we love her, and she loves you, and she loves doing the shows, and so we'll be back together again. Um, and most of you are just seeing our new set for the first time. We haven't mentioned it at all yeah, for the last true. five programs, but anyways, um, welcome new viewers. We're so excited. I hear from you all the time talking about you're flicking through the channel and found us. And, and I, it's amazing the stories when all of a sudden you'll say, oh, all of a sudden, I've seen four women sitting around the table and just listening got set free. Well, is that an honor That's or what? Awesome. Yeah. And then you say that the love of God, you feel the love of God, and you love that we don't argue. And we don't ever want to argue. We just want to bring our part and what God has called us to do through these airwaves to bless you so we can both be encouraged. Okay, I don't want to take any more time because we have guests all the way from Georgia. And I won't you help me uh, welcome our dear friends and pastors from Adairsville Church of God in Adairsville, Georgia. We are excited Woo! to be here. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you, very much. you guys, I mean, we, we can't, we, there's so much to talk about, really. You got to stay tuned because they are therapists and social workers and they have a, a ranch with horses that, that are doing all kinds of stuff with abused children. They're going to talk about that. Um, they have, uh, they had a tornado go through their town and the governor came, mayor, and didn't you guys get an honor or an award or something? Yeah. For a few all that. Of them. Yes, no for, for everything. No help with FEMA, but FEMA you're going to tell us count. all of that. So you tell us your whole stories, but I'm so glad you guys came. It is our privilege to be much. here. We are so thrilled. And Thank I just like. want to say that uh, when Charlene ministered to our ladies in Adairsville, lives were changed. We had miraculous oh, things happen yeah. through the prophetic word that was preached through God, your ministry. So good, Thank you. Those women have gone on to become leaders in our church mm -hmm. oh, and magnificent glory. warriors of the Lord. And thank you for the ministry wow. of God's view. Ladies, you Ooh. are beautiful, lovely women. And thank you for your thank witness. You, thank oh, you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. No and greater we're proud honor to be than here. that. Yeah. We're really proud to be here uh, because this is the horse capital of the world. And that's, <laughs> we're all about horses back yeah. where we live. And yeah, we tell just, us about the horse. I mean, you guys do so much and your church sure. is wonderful. I've right. met a lot of your church folk yes. and I'll tell you what, they love love you guys and they're hard workers you can tell they're for sold oh, out yes. and if your people are sold out that means you guys are sold out and you're doing good leadership right, jobs absolutely. so just talk to us about it okay well it's about two years ago about two and a half years ago a uh, tornado hit our town whenever it did mm -hmm. uh, FEMA came in they said we don't have any money for you and uh, all kinds of people came showed up and, and, and it actually landed on our church not the tornado but the rebuilding did uh -huh. and uh, we were the so, only church in town with lights well, that's exactly oh, wow. right. We had so electricity, nobody else did. Wow. Boy, was that prophetic. Oh, wow. yeah. the church, that's prophetic, the only church with light. Totally. Yeah, yeah. On, on the hill. hill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on the hill, absolutely. Let me say, we have marvelous churches in our town, though. Yeah. Great pastors and leaders that oh. really shouldered up with us and and yeah. really yeah. helped rebuild our community. We had $80-something some million dollars worth of damage, and FEMA said oh. in order to help you guys, yeah. you got to have $113 million dollars worth of damage. Oh. And so, like she said, all the churches came together in our town, and uh, and it was ah. unique because there was three guys kind of helped, you know, myself and, and mm -hmm. Doug Harris and Mike Abernathy. And uh, they all said it would take five years to get back to normal. Matter of fact, they used a term called the new normal, the new norm, mm. and uh, which was kind of a new term for us because we hadn't heard that before. But the tornado came in, destroyed homes, and hit the section of town that had low income. And, and a lot of people were living in houses that their grandfather had bought, and they didn't have any insurance at all. 
So uh, so it destroyed everything in that section of town. And uh, so these three guys, as well as uh, uh, David Franklin, came and helped us some. But but we went to work to, to rebuild the town. Ten months later, we built our last house. Woo! Now, uh, didn't did no five years. No, no it didn't, didn't. Uh -huh. Ten years. But, you know, on the first day that we started, we had 1,600 volunteers show up at our church. Wow. And we know there's 16 because nice. they all signed a release form. We had 75 chainsaw crews going at one time. Not one person got hurt. Oh, you know, my. Trees God. bent everywhere. Wow. Well, here's That's what's really unique good. about it. Here's what's yes. unique about it. So, so we work like, you know, three of us work like we never got a day off for months and months and months. Five months later, I had a stroke. Oh, I'm telling you, I had a stroke. Oh, and, I, and I was, uh, you know, and someone said, what happened? Well, I just didn't have any time off. So I had a stroke, right? And I'm, in the, I'm, I'm driving down the road, and I know I got a stroke because my left side won't work. My wife says, what's the matter? I said, nothing. You know how men are. Oh, and uh, no. so, so anyway, go to the doctor in the, in the emergency room. I immediately pulled off. To go to the emergency room, and the doctor says, you've had a stroke. I said, don't you need to do some tests or something? He said, man, i got two good eyes I can see. Oh. You've had a stroke. So that's on wow. Wednesday night, right? Wednesday night, go in the hospital. The next day, my friends come and see me. They all go and tell their wives, Ken Coomer's done for. He'll never be right again. He's finished. It's oh. over. <gasps> He will what? never. That was the well, that, they, they were yes, telling their friends. Right. They were telling their wives. They, they weren't telling everybody. But they were just telling people. <coughs> so that was on <laughs> Thursday, Friday morning, three o'clock in the morning. The Holy Spirit walked in the room. I'm talking about God walked in the room. Wow. God walks into the room and He said, "Get up. You're getting ready to have a spiritual battle like you've never had before. Wake up. You're going to have a battle." And so, uh, so I, I dragged myself up best I can, sat on the side of the bed, and 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 in about seconds, the devil walked in. He said. I got you. You'll never preach again. You'll never help anybody else again. You're done for. And I said, God, what do I need to do here? I don't know what to do. And God said, you know what to do. Rebuke him, resist him, and he's got to flee. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, the next morning, people came to see me. They say, what happened to you? What are you even doing here for? You just don't want to do no more work on tornado because it was completely changed. The doctor came in. Did all the exams. He said, you have zero blockage here, zero blockage here. Glory we don't God. know what happened, yeah. but you can see God healed me. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you're so, he works harder now than he ever did uh -huh. uh, with all the Well, you know, the, but, there, there was another guy named Mike Abnath that he worked too. And, and we was working one day and looking at Mike, he didn't look right. And they take him to the hospital, and he dies on the operate. He dies on the table, wow. a massive heart attack. Right? These are pastors who the enemy was trying to take, take out. Take out. Mm -hmm. Mike has a massive heart attack on the table, and they don't know what happened. But in a few minutes, he comes back. Absolutely, God healed him right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's just amazing wow. what God did in the middle of that tornado to yeah. show His power. Not just yeah. in the secular side, not just building houses, but how God can heal you mm -hmm. in a supernatural way. Well, and I think about how, you know, this whole thing brought all the churches together in the unity in the body of Christ. And, of course, the enemy doesn't want that happening. Mm -hmm. So what better way to come in and try to take out the pastors that are actually coming yes. together yes. in unity and yeah. how powerful that is in a community yes. when you come in unity like that. Well, actually, what happened in our community about... about Five or six years before, we had a, a, a fellow pastor whose name was John Beasley. He had twin sons, and one of them, when he was in the hospital, had contact hepatitis. Mm -hmm. And his mother-in-law said, we're going to do this thing at our church to help raise money for him to get another liver transplant. I said, why do it at your church? Come to my church. It's a bigger building, a bigger facility. And from that moment on, we had unity in the community. Wow. The black uh, churches the and the white churches all together, worked together. together, brought offerings, oh, wow. and we raised $10,000. Well, uh, and they were just amazed that white churches would come together and help African American pastors just free will like that. They were wow. just amazed. And that began a work of reconciliation and That's wholeness awesome. in our community. Mm -hmm. wow. and, and of course, wow. then when the tornado came, it was just we natural to help the unity wow. there. It was already there. Yes. But you know, we were doing a lot of interviews during that time, and there was a television station out of Atlanta came, and they said to me, they said, uh, What are you doing? It sort of said, you know, you're a, Caucasian, you you're a Caucasian minister, and all these churches around here are African-American churches. What are you doing? I said, we don't roll like that in this community. Amen. We're Amen. not having that here. We're just you take not that about back race. To, you it's take about that people. Back you Nobody's want to take it back. God. We are children yes. of God. Mm -hmm. We work together Amen. in our town. We're not going to have it. Mm -hmm. And Amen. it was amazing, you know, because uh, it just makes a difference. It God does. makes a difference. So he's yeah. healing the racial things that have been happening oh, yes. throughout the 
the well, years. Well, that's what the news that's wouldn't awesome. sure let you believe no, that, but it no. is true. It is, it is that true. In the it's body of Christ, in I often Amen. say, if we cannot get along in the body of Christ, there's no hope in the world. Mm -hmm. Forget that's it. Right. It's not going to happen in the world, no matter what your best efforts are. Yeah. But in the body of Christ, we have to be colorblind. We ha we learned that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. yes. To be effective in ministry, you just have to look at people through Christ Amen. and how much love. He loves them. Mm -hmm. I think about how Christ loved me mm -hmm. and I look at my little grandson, he's 14 months old and he'll just lay that little head over on me and give me love and the Lord showed me the other day, He said, that's what I want from you. Oh. I want you to just lay your head over on me yes. and just give me love because you are mine. I, you are so precious. Yes. And so if we can walk in the Spirit and and not walk in the flesh. Mm -hmm. The flesh is always mm -hmm. pulling at us through the news media and through the hopelessness of, of our culture. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what is so exciting to me about the, the horse work that we do. We have ministered this summer uh, to 2,000 children at uh, oh. Church of God Youth Camps in Georgia. And we do this every year. We have opportunities to uh, inner city children in Atlanta can come and for the first time they can touch a horse and we have uh, also sponsored a lot of foster children because I am a social worker. And, and for a child that has been molested, to trust enough to open their legs and sit on a horse is an amazing, it's an amazing wow. healing time. Yes. And it's a very difficult thing for them to do. And so we have been able this summer to minister to children who have been uh, through many, many terrible things. Wow. But mm -hmm. because of the horses, they're ministered to, and we're and our children in our church have grown up to learn to saddle their own horses, teach other children to saddle, wow. take these kids on trail rides, and talk to them about their wow. souls and their issues, wow. and minister to them. That's so it's wonderful. really reciprocated. So it's thrilling to me to see the thousands of horses on Frontier Day when you all have those uh, activities. It's just amazing oh, to yeah. see so many horses because they bring such healing. Did they have the clients to today? Sometimes they don't come till Thursday, but they're stunning. Oh, they had every kind of horse, Percherons, Clydesdales, wow. mostly quarter horses. I didn't see a lot of Tennessee walkers, but just yes. us old folks like those. Yes. <laughs> she, she knows yes. I'm a trail I'm rider. Yes. yes. Wow. Oh, you beautiful. guys are doing such a great work there. And, and I'll tell you, that's what's needed in the body of Christ right now. Everybody just coming together no matter what. You what know? made you start a church in the first place? How did you get going with that? Oh, that's, that, that's an old, a old story, time. you know. Uh, you know, years and years ago, uh, I wasn't exactly minister quality, you know. Uh, <laughs> I got him fresh out of fresh out of the Marines. Oh, so wow. my my uh, my his uncle was my pastor, and he kept saying Joyce because I was sold out for God, yeah. and he said Joyce, I want you to meet my nephew and win him to the Lord. And I said. I'm not dating a sinner. You taught me better than that. And he said, no, I need you to get him in church. And, minute, and I had my eye on three preachers in that congregation. They were all single. And I said, I'm not doing it. Well, do you know that I brought him? He, he, we met at a yard sale for his cousin was my best friend. And, and it's <laughs> wonderful that we met at a yard sale. If you knew how he loves to buy, sell, and trade. <laughs> Thank God he hasn't he traded me yet. He asked me to go out with him. I said, well, sure, you can take me to church tomorrow. Because yeah. I knew a Marine would not yeah. set foot in my church because right. the power of God was there. Yeah. He came to church. The lady ministered to him that was preaching. He didn't believe in women pastors or ministers, but wow. she was preaching yeah. under the anointing. She came back to him and she said, son, wouldn't you like to get saved today? And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so that afternoon we went to eat, hung out, and he said, would you like to go out again? And I said, sure, take me to church tonight. <laughs> and he got saved that night. <gasps> then T.L. Lowry had a citywide revival in my city in oh, Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. This was in 1974. So he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and wow. he didn't believe in that either. <laughs> but it doesn't and, matter. And then God yeah. called him we to preach. Oh, and we've days, been, we've been pastoring for 41 years. We've been uh, in ministry. Wow. wow. And you know what's really amazing with... Um, with the story you're, you know, talking about with the tornado and the horses and the abuse and all that, do you know? Isn't it?
it I got everything seems to come out of devastation, yeah. destruction, uh, and yes. then restoration comes because you have that horrible destruction of the tornado, and you can't think of any worse horrible destruction on a child that's no. abused. You right. know, I mean, that's just beyond, you know, my, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to help them out with the horses and everything. And so you have a church, and you say your church is small, but 150 church can do a lot when they're yes. on fire for God. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Talk about that's some of the ministries small. we're involved in. Well, actually, yes. when when the tornado hit, our, it was kind of unique because for uh, really 10 months, and for six months, every Sunday, our congregation worked. I mean, every weekend, they'd get off work, they'd come and they'd feed mm -hmm. people and they'd work. We had to feed the volunteers, so there mm -hmm. were thousands of wow. volunteers. And we had thousands of help, but, but there was just a lot of work. Wow. And so, uh, so somehow, in, in the process of all that, uh, I can't really explain it, we had a decrease. Instead of having an increase, you know, we had a decrease. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, uh, you know, I had a master's degree in uh, pastoral ministries. I got a job as therapist, you know, because we got five missionaries out of our church. We have five missionaries. The oldest one is 32. We have three uh, in, in dangerous, in a dangerous place. We're not going to talk about, of course. Yes. We have another one in Panama, and we have another one just does missionary work all the time. So you got to support those missionaries. Church got to do that, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, so our, you know, they talk about the new normal. After the tornado hit, mm. we had a whole new normal. That yeah. was not what we'd been used to all of our life. But the Lord provided in several different ways that you mm. can't even begin to imagine. And, of course, one of those ways is we do therapy mm. and we help people. And, uh, you know, there's a therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy, which basically says that if you give a person enough time, they can figure out exactly what's wrong in their life. What's so amazing is you walk into situations and the Lord uses you. I'm talking mm -hmm. about the gifts of the Spirit or in operation mm -hmm. discernment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even when you look at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 1, it talks about how the Spirit of the Lord will be using people in the end of time, mm -hmm. Joel 2 and 28. And I think that's where we are. I think we're in a place where that if the church can figure out, and, and I think if church don't figure out, God will figure it out. But if the church can figure out how to get us out of our four walls, out of our comfort zone, because I'm telling you, uh, you know, I like the other comfort zone better yeah. do this one, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, we think. Uh, Interesting. Well, you wouldn't have been in, in therapy probably well, going into that, right? Well, now that, I mean, the therapy's yeah. part of it, but, but uh -huh. in the process, I started a little company. You know, I started another little company. And so, so I work with a whole group of guys that don't go to church. But one of the guys, uh, and, and one of the guys uh, the other day, was walking by me. Now, you got to understand, I, I don't know the guy's last name. I don't know if know his real all name. truckers. Hmm. Truck drivers. Mm -hmm. Well, and so, so he walks by me, and, and he had surgery last week, this guy did, and he walked by me. Now, I don't know him, you understand? I don't know his last name. I don't know if the, the name we use. I don't, know, I don't think it's a real name. It don't sound real. But I, but I work with these guys every day now. And so he walked by me, and he stopped, and he turned around. Now, this is not a guy who goes to church. I can tell by his vocabulary, you know. <laughs> and he walked by me, and he said, you're a man of God. Ooh. Now, where'd that come from? I, I still don't know where it came from this day, but I know this. So what happened is my life completely changed, but I have opportunities to minister I never would before in touching people's life. If you're not ashamed of Jesus, right. Jesus give you opportunity yes. to do His work. Yes. He does. Amen. And you know the people that we uh, professionally deal with, many of them are suicidal. Many of them deal with grief, uh, depression, and so. You know, we in the body of Christ, we don't have those problems, right? Oh, Nobody God. ever gets depressed <laughs> oh, or has no. grief. Actually, we, we do have an advocate. We know yeah. where our source yes, is. We know, and yeah. so we understand that we do have those same trials, but we have the Holy Spirit, as we, we spoke about out. before, yeah. and that He comforts us and He mm -hmm. helps us get yeah. through those things. But the people we work with do not have mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So guess who gets to introduce them to that? Yeah. To the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we've had some real significant spiritual awesome. positive things happen in the lives of our clients. Uh, and that's thrilling because I worked for the state for many years and you can't do that. You, well, you can. You just have to, Yeah. you just, you, you know, the light shows just like he, yes. he, yeah. you know, the yes. guy just walked by yeah. him. There were people I ministered to when I was in the state that they would just walk by me and say, I know you, uh, can you help me? And I have people call me all the time from that source and, and say, I need help. And, you know, we can help people. That's mm -hmm. the great thing. We, yeah. we don't have, we don't have a food bank. We don't have a way to pay their bills. 
but we can help them. Yeah. We help them through their life situations because uh, we live in a, a very controversial time in our culture, yeah. but all of this uproar, we have peace. Mm -hmm. Why? How do you have peace? Jesus. We have hope. No, we, yes. we know the end of the story, yep. and we're part yeah. of that great end of the story. Yes. And so I just want to be uh, faithful in what he calls us to do. Mm -hmm. Walk in the Spirit, because if you're walking in the Spirit, you're not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And yeah. that's what so many people ruin their lives doing. They just run into the flesh, the things that the flesh says is okay and good, and then they find themselves ruined. Yeah. And yeah. praise God, then Jesus... Yeah. And us, the church, all of us can pull them out of that darkness. Praise mm -hmm. God, set their feet. And that's miraculous. Mm -hmm. I would rather see that than 10 blinded eyes open. Mm -hmm. uh, to see yeah. someone set free mm -hmm. from the powers of darkness. It's just, it's and amazing. You, know, you guys are encouraging pastors today too because yeah. there's so many pastors that have went through all of this and then here you're doing all of this work, you know, Pastor Coomer, and you're, you know, working and getting the community together and all this tornado stuff and then in the middle of it you have a stroke and it's probably like, hello, but yeah. then God heals you. But So this is giving other pastors hope because... Don't give up. Don't yeah. give up. If you're Amen. the pastor's wife Amen. and you're sitting there and your husband has devastated you or your his health is devastated. Maybe oh, you've been God. thrown out of a parsonage, out of ministry. You think your life is over. It is not yeah. because you can make it whether he makes it or not. You can make it because you have the power of God in you. And I have the power of God in me. And that's the only reason I could stand all that. I was very resentful of the time and, and the physical labor that he spent but I was right along with him. Yeah. My mother says, y'all yeah. kill me. You're just killing yourself <laughs> because we work so hard. But, but you know, praise God, we could be doing a whole lot of other things. But look at the testimony you have now. Yeah. Sure. And, and the memories you have. But you know what's interesting, too, is the fact that the Lord tells us in the Word to rest and yes. that we shouldn't overdo ourselves. And even when we're doing ministry, we're holy men of God, we're doing everything for God, but if we're not allowing our bodies to rest, that's an area where we have to obey God. And we can open the door He there maketh me to, to lie evil, down mm -hmm. to the evil in green pastures. Sometimes yes. he has to make a minister or people who are yeah. hypervigilant like we are to just lie down. It, it felt yeah. so good to watch your program today and just sit uh, and just, and just uh, relax you know, and watch other do. people yeah. do dynamic ministries and mm -hmm. it was it was just refreshing. But I think the key is this. Somewhere along the way I think the ministry has lost the love for the ministry. Mm. You know, because it's so burnout everywhere. <clears throat> and 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 he never said it's gonna be easy, so it's not easy. But the fact is God has the ability to give all of us strength. And I know it's a good thing to rest. That's, that's good, if, if you know, and, unless you've got somebody sick in the hospital, unless you've got this, you got to take care of that, or you got to <laughs> feed your family. M many times we're not sure what to do, but we know this. Uh, you know, we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, how important mm -hmm. they are. What, what just blows me away is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talks about the nine spiritual giftings divided in three categories. We understand that. 1 Corinthians 14 talks about prophecy and interpretation, how that it should be a dynamic word from God, a secret thing God shares. But 1 Corinthians 13 said this, you got to be in love. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If you're not in love, you you're know what you are? Playing yeah. Playing you, but I think first you got to love who you are. Mm -hmm. You got to love your God. And then you got to love ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, yeah, of course, yeah. if you know anything at all, ministry begins at home. Amen. You know, if you can't love your companion or your spouse, mm -hmm. then, you, you know, you're not going to love anybody else. Yeah. So it begins there. That's mm -hmm. right. So. I'd like to just mention the prophetic ministry that you all are so uh, good at, at promoting, and I love that. Um, the Lord used me. I want to just share this story because there's yes. people probably like me that have had prophetic ministry in their lives. And if you're a Pentecostal preacher's wife, you sure have, and you've heard it. Uh, wonderfully <laughs> and yeah. terribly, probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, misinterpreted and it's all true. that. But, uh, but the Lord uh, used me a few, well, a few years ago now to minister in the, in the prophetic to, that God was calling someone into ministry. And he said, why would you not follow me? Why yeah. would you follow the world? And, and, and then the Lord spoke to a person to go to a foreign field, and it was my son. Mm. I, and, I, you know, I had lots of 
questions about that. God, why me? Why? You know, I felt very responsible. But, you know, God and I came to an agreement. He said, I am his father. Yeah. You're his mother, but I am his father. Mm -hmm. And I will take care of him. That's and do you know right. that he has provided for him three yeah. years on the mission field. And I kept saying, God, we, we're just a little country church. We can't, we can't provide for him. And, but God is his father yes. and he Divine. has provided and I'm so thankful that that you need to be used in the prophetic and mm -hmm. you need to be genuine and let God use you it may be your own children that you're yeah. prophesying wow. I had no amazing? idea it's amazing and he signed up for a second term three he's going back three. for the third oh, year my goodness. and then you have a son really quickly because we're getting down he's there. a state legislator okay he is a, he is a god man he is in our he's our music no, director his wife need. is our music director he's a great singer mm -hmm. leads in worship and does our devotions every sunday morning Aww. and then he lives at the capitol what he preaches at the church wow. and awesome. uh, the governor has just appointed him as the um, transportation chair uh, the dot department of transportation he's the chairman but it's not the actually the House Representative Chairman appointed him to that. So, but we're so, just uh, we're proud of our kids. You know, oh, amen. Yeah. Yeah. I have a son that's still out there, but God has His hand on him, and He's going to walk in that anointing. We, we have uh, three sons, and all three of them served in the military. All three of them served the country, and all three of them are making a difference. Wow. So oh, amazing. with that, I love you guys. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on this way. I love you guys. It's so fun. And I, they're gonna, they're, we're going to be together for the next few days. Huh? We're going to have fun. And, and anyways, listen, listen, listen. You heard what they said. You've heard what God has said today. And he, he, listen, he loves you. And if you don't know him and you hear us talking about Jesus and the Holy Spirit and all these wonderful things, it really is wonderful. I was a hurting, lost person. All of us up here was. Mm -hmm. at one time and God came in and he saved us mm -hmm. and don't wait to get cleaned up don't wait and think oh well, I, I can't be like that well no you can't be just right now broken as you are just come to him as you are right. and just say I need you I need what they have I need what they're talking about because you're feeling the presence of God and that's what it is exactly his presence and the Holy Spirit is convicting you because no man cometh to the Father but by the drawing of the Spirit of the living God and he's drawing you right now so don't don't shrink back just run to him it'll be the best thing you ever did he'll pick up the pieces he'll clean you up yes, he just come and say I need you I want you forgive me of my sin I believe in my heart I confess with my mouth because that's what the Bible says to do and all you got to do is believe in your heart confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the living God the Christ the Son yes. he's a living God he died really truly on a cross he really did rise again and he's coming back to get us all again so call those prayer lines if you did that so that we can pray with you and <clears throat> we thank you so much for tuning in go to our Facebook pages go to our website across the bottom of the screen and uh, you can purchase uh, DVDs or CDs of the program or you know I mean you, just go and look at our product and if there's anything that you think is of value to you I'm telling you certainly it will help you out it really really will and give us a call we love you but you know what most importantly Jesus loves you yes, and does. if you received him today it is the most important thing you'll ever do trust me give us a call Amen. we love you it's only goodbye for today we'll see you next program God willing go to www.godsviewtvshows.com to view all God's View TV show hosts books and CDs